Hey man, how y'all doing today? It's great to see you. And if you are watching this live, happy 4th of July. The day that our forefathers sat down and said, we are declaring our independence from Great Britain. And Great Britain turned around and says, you can't say that. And our forefathers, our founding fathers, however you want to put it, turned around and said, I didn't say it. I declared it. Hey man, happy 4th of July to you. And let's go ahead and open up here in a word of prayer. Our most gracious Father in heaven, we do thank you, Lord, for being so good to us, for loving us and saving us. I want to thank you, Father, for giving us the great joy, the wonderful privilege of being born here in America, where we can have our religious freedom and, and and have the ability to have the, these uh, church services without uh, government overwatch. Yeah, uh, we're so thankful, Father, for it. And we do pray, Lord, for your blessings upon these services here, Lord. Uh, those will be live streaming. Those will be taking place there at the, the uh, local uh, church houses. And yeah, 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 that's right. There are even some churches out there. They ain't got a building to meet at, but they're meeting in someone's home. They're meeting in someone's backyard, garage, at a conference center, at the local motel, whatever the case is. Father. We do pray, Lord, for your blessings upon them. We ask you, Father, please to touch each and every preacher that stands to bring your holy word. Help him, Father, please, to present the word the way that you'd have him to. Help us all, Father, as we sing these congregational songs and the special songs that we will do our utmost, Lord, to lift your name in the most holy of praise, Father. We know we certainly will never be able to do a good enough job down here on earth, but we are so looking forward, yes, to that glorious day when we're going to get to go home and we'll have all of eternity to get it right there. Mm, sounds good. Sounds good. Yes, indeed. We ask you, Father, for all the churches out there that are looking for a pastor, that they would find the right man for them, Lord. We do ask you, Father, for all the prayer requests as well. Uh, Henry Allen and his issues there, Father. We, uh, Dad and uh, Rogers, they're dealing uh, with the dementia and their wives as they're dealing with this as well. And uh, we do pray, Lord, for all the financial needs and health issues that are needed, jobs, whatever the case would be, Father. We thank you, Lord, for loving us and saving us. In Jesus' precious name we do pray. Amen and amen. How about this little ditty right here? Heavenward bound. Amen. And if you are blood-bought, born again by the precious blood of Jesus Christ, you are heavenward bound. Troublesome times are here, filling men's hearts with fear. Freedom we all hold dear, now is at stake. Humble your hearts to God, safe from a chastening rod. Seek the way pilgrims trot, Christians awake. And Jesus is coming soon, morning or night or noon. Many will meet their doom, trumps will sound. All the dead shall rise, righteous meet in the skies. Going where no one dies, heavenward bound. And troubles will soon be o'er, oh, happy forevermore. When we meet on that shore, free from all care. Rising up in the sky, telling this world goodbye. Homeward we then shall fly, glory to share. And Jesus is coming soon, morning or night or noon. Many will meet their doom. Trumps will sound, all the dead shall rise, righteous meet in the skies, going where no one dies, heavenward bound. And Jesus is coming soon, morning or night or noon, many will meet their doom. Trumps will sound, all the dead shall rise, righteous meet in the skies, going where no one dies, heavenward bound. Amen, amen, I'm looking forward to it, I'm excited today, I hope you are too, yes, it's the uh, anniversary of our country's birth and all that, but it's also one day closer to Jesus coming back and us going home. We'll be out of here, church. Amen. 
And speaking of which, what a day that will be. Hey, Amen. Let's sing this song right here. <clears throat> There's coming a day when no heartache shall come, no more clouds in the sky. And no more tears to dim the eye. All is peace forevermore on that happy golden shore. What a day, glorious day that will be. Oh, what a day that will be when my Jesus I shall see. And I look upon his face, the one who saved me by his grace. When he takes me by the hand and leads me through the promised land. Oh, what a day, glorious day that will be. There'll be no sorrow there, no more burdens to bear, no more sickness, no pain, no more parting over there. And forever I will be with the one who died for me. Oh, what a day, glorious day that will be. Oh, what a day that will be. When my Jesus I shall see, and I look upon his face, the one who saved me by his grace, when he takes me by the hand and leads me through the promised land. What a day, glorious day that will be. Oh, what a day that will be. When my Jesus I shall see, and I look upon his face, the one who saved me by his grace. When he takes me by the hand and leads me through the promised land. What a day, glorious day that will be. Hey man, hey man, what a day that's going to be. And you talk about the fireworks that are going to happen that day. <laughs> Millions of people suddenly gone. This world is going to be freaking out. They ain't going to have a clue what's going on. But we, mm -hmm, yes, those of us who are saved, we're going to be entering into heaven. We're going to get to see him face to face. There ain't no firework display out there that will compare with that beauty. There'll be no sounds going on that will compare with the saints who are going to be singing his praises when we enter heaven's gate. Mm. All right, well, our uh, sermon today is going to be out of Acts chapter number 12. And uh, we're actually looking to cover the entirety of the chapter today. But don't worry, we won't keep you too terribly long. Uh, but before we do that, I would like to uh, sing a special here for you today. <clears throat> Got to thinking about this as I was uh, studying uh, for the sermon here, and it just felt like it really belonged with it. So uh, you pray for me as I try to get this through the song here. Now, this is an oldie. It's an oldie. On the wings of a snow white dove. He sends his pure, sweet love, a sign from above, on the wings of a dove. When trouble surrounds us, when evil comes, the body grows weak, and the spirit grows numb. When these things beset us, he doesn't forget us. He sends down his love on the wings of a dove. On the wings of a snow white dove. He sends his pure sweet love. A sign from above on the wings of a dove. When Noah had drifted on the flood many days. He searched for land. In various ways, troubles he had some, but wasn't forgotten. For he sent down his love on the wings of a dove, on the wings of a snow white dove. He sends his pure sweet love aside from above, 
on the wings of a dove, on the wings of a snow white dove. He sends his pure sweet love, a sign from above, on the wings of a dove. Hey man, I haven't sung that song in years, maybe even decades at this point in my life. But uh, like I said, I was, I was uh, going over the sermon here today. It just really seemed to be the uh, most appropriate song to sing in conjunction with this particular sermon that we're going to do here today. So I trust you have found Acts chapter number 12 by now. Uh, we're going to read the first five verses here. And Dr. Luke writes, under the inspiration of the Holy Ghost, now about that time, Herod the king, by the way, that's Herod Agrippa I. This is the fourth Herod that we are shown here uh, in the New Testament. Uh, one more to come, and that's it. Uh, now about the time the Herod the king stretched forth his hand to vex certain of the church, and he killed James the brother of John with the sword. And because he saw it pleased the Jews, he proceeded further to take Peter also. Then were the days of unleavened bread. And when he had apprehended him, he put him in prison and delivered him to four quaternions of soldiers to keep him, intending after Easter to bring him forth to the people. In other words, he was going to kill him too. Peter, therefore, was kept in prison, but prayer was made without ceasing of the church unto God for him. As we continue our series here on the forward progress of the church, uh, there are times when it seems like we ain't making no progress uh, because it seem, really feels like God is taking his slow, sweet time. And that does tend to, to bother us. We're wanting to go forward. We're, we're wanting to march forward. And God's, no, not just yet. I'm setting something else up. So with all that being in mind, we're, we'd like to bring our sermon today on this little thought of when God takes his time. When God takes his time. Abba Father, would you thank you, Lord, once again for being so good to us, for loving us and saving us. We praise your holy name, Father, for another opportunity here with Garage Baptist to be able to uh, present the word the way that you'd have for us to. That these sermons, whether they be live, you know, viewed here live on Facebook or there on the YouTube channel or listened to there on Sermon Audio, that they will get through to everyone that they are supposed to get through. Whether it be today or tomorrow, next week, a few months from now, down the road, whenever the case would be, Father. That people will hear what they need to hear. And yes, I'll hopefully uh, understand that, you know, just because things are, seem to be going wrong for us doesn't mean that it's catching you off guard, that it's causing you any sort of uh, emergency. It's not making you break out and sweat. What am I going to do now? That you're lining things up for your word to get accomplished. So help us, Father, please, to keep this thought in mind that yeah, sometimes the answer is yes, sometimes the answer is no, and sometimes the answer is just simply go slow. Well, we thank you, Father, for loving us and saving us, and we do ask you, Father, for all the prayer requests been made known, as well as the unspoken, that you would take care of them as you see fit. In the precious name of our brother, our high priest, and our soon-coming King Jesus, in his name we ask you, Father. Amen and amen. So, uh, let's be honest here as we uh, look at our text. Uh, things ain't exactly looking too good. Uh, James, one of the uh, apostles, has just been executed. He's died a martyr's death. Peter, the, the, the de facto leader of the apostles, has now been placed under arrest. And Herod has every intention of killing him as well. And the people, <laughs> they cheered when James died. They cheered when Herod arrested Peter. They cheered knowing what Herod intends to do with Peter 
just as soon as the holidays are over with. From our human perspective, that's messed up. It looks like, from our perspective, that things aren't going right. They're not going according to plan. And in our own personal lives, uh, we get that way often. Something makes us late. Something changes our plans. Uh, all of a sudden, there's a financial setback. We're not talking one that costs us 20 bucks. We're talking one that costs us hundreds of dollars. What in the world is going on here? And we, we, we fail to see the need to sit back and wait. Maybe there's something else going on here. We, we don't know everything. But God does. Praise God for that. He knows. See, God doesn't work on our time schedule. God is not bound to take care of everything that we want when we want it. Now, he's promised to supply all of our need. And, and some of these you know, other versions of the Bible, they, they retranslate the word need as needs, uh, plural. Uh, the fact of the matter is God, who exists outside of time, outside of the boundary of time, uh, he's looking at says, okay, this is what you need right now, and I'm going to take care of this need right now. Once that need is took care of, we'll move that out. Now, I, here's the next need, and I will take care of the next need. And, and the translating it, it needs presumes way too much. Going by the word need, we see that God is going to take care of what is needed at that moment. And sometimes what is needed at that moment is for us to slow down, slow our roll, hold our horses, however you want to put it, put the brakes on. Stop already. I put up a huge stop sign. Knock it off. Wait for me. Yeah, sometimes they have answers. No, we hate when the answers no. It's like, come on, God, don't you know I want to do this? And God's saying, yeah, I know you want to do it, but that's not what I want you to do. <laughs> God, I've got this issue over here. My loved one is sick. My loved one is in pain. My loved one is suffering. What's going on? God's saying, I've got something else lined up. Something else that I want to accomplish. You need to have a little bit of patience, my child. And we stink at having patience. We live in a microwave society where we want everything right now. We want the answers right now. We, we want this blessing right now. We want this blessing this particular way right now. God doesn't work that way. And then you get into the issues of life. And, and I'm, in fact, I'm, I'm going to go so far as to say I'm going to give you my points right here and now. At least the first four. People we love die. Yet God's taking his time. Persecution is on the rise. Yet God is taking his time. Prayers seem to go unanswered. Yet God is taking his time. And the powerful are becoming even more powerful, yet God is taking his time. What's going on, God? God's still on the throne. And God is still saying, I am still sovereign. You need to have faith. In what I'm trying to accomplish. So people we love are dying. We see here in verse number 2. And he killed James the brother of John with the sword. Now, the, James. The, 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 one of the three inner circle of Jesus. When he was here on this earth. He was Peter, James and John. Now yeah. We, we are told. Uh, there in uh, the end of John. Uh, was it chapter 21 I'm wanting to say it was? 
Maybe chapter 22. I'll get it here in a moment. Let me just turn here because I don't want to give any wrong information. Chapter 21, yep, okay. It's Revelation has 22 chapters. I'll get them straight eventually. Jesus told Peter, to says, hey, you know, there's going to come a point in time, and I'm paraphrasing here, uh, you're going to go to the cross. You're going to be an old man, and you go to the cross. Peter looks at Jesus say, hey, what about John? Didn't look at, Pete, at Jesus and say, what about James? He said, what about John? And Jesus said, hey, you know, don't worry about it. If I want him to remain alive until I come back, he'll remain alive until I come back. But don't you worry about that. Now, he wasn't promising that John was going to live you know, an eternal human life here on this earth. Uh, it's, John got to die an old man. But that of the inner three, that leaves James. And, and it's crushing to see that James has now been removed from the picture. Yeah, it shows his, his death here, the, the second martyr that we're shown here in the book of Acts. It does show that the apostles were not immortal. That's good news. <laughs> One less thing we need to try to live up to. Uh, but the fact of the matter is... There are people who we love who are going to die. James was loved by his brother John, by the rest of any other siblings they had, by the rest of the apostles, the, the other disciples who lived in this time. James died. We have loved ones, we have friends, we have family who die. We don't want them to. So often it's why did they die? They were so young. I, I think of my uh, step-grandmother who passed away a few weeks ago here. Uh, the way she had to go. Why, Lord, did it happen? Did it have to happen that way? I still to this day don't know. But all I do know is this. I'm hoping and praying that God somehow got the, the honor and glory from it. Because the Bible says, precious in the sight of the Lord is the death of his saints. God may be taking his time when our, when our loved ones die, but it doesn't mean that he doesn't care. There's something else going on that we don't know about. We are not omniscient. We don't know everything. God is omniscient. He knows everything. We need to keep this in mind. Yeah, it hurts. Yeah, it stinks. That it had to happen. But that's why he's on a throne and not us. I mean, think about this for a moment. I won't... We'll get back to the sermon here in a moment, but this just comes to mind. There in John chapter 11, Lazarus, this good friend of Jesus, had passed away. Jesus goes back there four days after he died. Show me the tomb. They take him to the tomb. The Bible says in John eleven thirty five, 35, Jesus wept. He didn't weep because his friend died, church. He wept because he knew what he was about to do. He was about to bring Lazarus back to life. Back to this human life where there was going to now be pain again, suffering again. He was going to end up having to die again. People were going to be threatening to kill him because he was a miracle of resurrection. So threats were going to be there. Persecution was going to be there. All of this suffering was going to be there. And it hurt his heart to do this to him knowing full well the last four days he'd been there in paradise with Abraham with the other Lazarus Isaac, Jacob Joseph, all of them and he had to come back when God takes his time when people we love die he does stink but he knows what he's doing, church. Persecution on the rise. And yet God is taking his time. Why, God? Why? Verse 3 says, And because he saw it pleased the Jews. 
Uh, these ain't the, the Jews who have gotten saved. These are the Jews who are, who are fighting against the, this new uh, way, the, the, this new, uh, what they're being called Christians now. They don't like this church. They want to stick with Judaism. He proceeded further to take or to catch Peter also. So I'm going to do to Peter what I just did to James. You watch and see. I'm going to be large and in charge, Herod says. You Jews are going to love me because I am eliminating people who are strongly against your religion. They weren't strongly against it. They were showing him what it was supposed to be. <laughs> They were supposed to be a light to bring others to God. And that salvation is for everybody. And that these Jews could also be saved. That they could also come to a saving knowledge of Jesus Christ. His perfect sinless life. His substitutionary death there on the cross of Calvary. His shed blood to pay our sin debt. And God resurrecting him on the third glorious day afterward to show he had accepted the sacrifice. But the people didn't care about none of that. They only wanted their way. So they persecuted the church. Herod gets in on the act. It goes from being the religious people are persecuting the church to now the government is getting involved in persecuting the church. Getting it from all sides. So, Herod sees an opportunity to act. Hey, y'all that like this new church, I'll start persecuting it and y'all will like me. How many governments around the world are busy persecuting Christians that are trying to serve the Lord, that are trying to spread the gospel? I can't help but think about China. All that's going on over there, the persecuted church is there in China right now. They get a hold of a little a single page of scripture there. They've got to memorize it so that they can turn around and pass that scripture on to somebody else without getting caught. Because if you've got it in your heart, they can't take that away from you. It's on paper, they can destroy it. We here in America, we think we're persecuted because, uh, you know, Everything that, that uh, the news keeps talking about. We ain't seen persecution yet, church. They, they Canada might be starting to lock up people for various reasons, but they really ain't gotten deep into it yet. It's heading America's way too, church. Persecution is on the rise. Why is it on the rise, preacher? I'm glad you asked. I like when you ask those questions. The reason persecution is on the rise is because the time is drawing near. Jesus, like we sang earlier there in the hymns, is coming soon. And every second brings us that much closer to his arrival. His splitting eastern sky, we out of here. Seven years later, from that moment, here comes Jesus. To rule and reign for a thousand years. See how persecution is going to be on the rise. But yet God is being silent. You know when it, when it, it kind of really, really gets to us though. When we start offering up those prayers. Oh God, this is what's needed. It's awful silent right now. God, uh, hello. Kind of, kind of need some help here, God. Uh, where are you at, God? Uh, hello. Is this thing on? <laughs> Prayers are going unanswered. Notice with me in verse number 15 of this chapter. Now, this is after Peter's been released. He's come to the door. He's knocked on the door. Uh, Rhoda came to the door. She's listening in. Here's Peter's voice. Hey, yo, y'all, it's me, Peter. Can you let me in? She leaves him outside, runs inside. Peter's at the door. Peter's at the door. Lady, you're crazy. You're nuts. Peter ain't at the door. Verse 15, and they said unto her, thou art mad. You're crazy. 
You've fallen down, you've hit your head. You don't know what you're talking about. Now, I'm sure at the very beginning of this chapter, when, when Herod first started moving and he first started arresting James, I'm sure people began to pray, Oh God, please release James from prison. Oh God, we don't need any trouble. Just let him come on out. Maybe a beating at the worst like you know, it's been done previously, but please let him come out. What do you mean that they killed James? Beheaded him? That's one of the worst things you can do to, to somebody's behead them. The Jews had four different forms of capital punishment. Uh, they had stoning, uh, strangulation, beheading, and uh, the fourth one is escaping my mind. But beheading was considered to be the worst church. Beheading was reserved for those who were who were heretics, who were trying to lead people astray from the, quote-unquote, true religious way. They would be beheaded. They, had the, they shared this in common with Rome, the beheadings. And here Herod is, and he's beheaded James. God, why didn't you answer that prayer to save James? Now here's Rhoda... She comes running in. She didn't bring Peter. She left him outside. So she's got no proof whatsoever. Peter's at the door. <laughs> Woman, you're crazy. He ain't at the door. Well, I'm telling you, he's at the door. I heard his voice. Then you heard his angel. Now, in other words, you, you heard his spirit. He's dead. And he can't come in unless we open up the door for him. His spirit is, is you know, his, his body is in the grave now. And his spirit is wandering, making his way up to heaven. It's too late. Kind of makes you wonder how much true faith they had when they were saying those prayers. Oh God, please deliver Peter from the same fate as James. That when the answer comes knocking at the door, Rhoda, go check. We got to continue praying for Peter's deliverance. Oh, God, please deliver Peter from the same fate as James. Peter's at the door. Oh, God, please deliver Peter from the same fate as James and help Rhoda out. She's done lost her marbles. Why are y'all praying that if you don't believe that Peter could possibly be at the door? <laughs> But ain't that how we act? God sends the answer to our prayer and we still keep praying like, God, when you going to send an answer? God answers in one of three ways. Go, no, or slow. Go, yes, I'm telling you do it. No, I'm telling you don't do it. Slow, wait, and see. In this particular instance, the answer was go. Go to the door. Let the boy in. But we'll keep knocking. We'll keep praying. And God's got the answer sitting right there. Um, ask, seek, knock. Uh, you've asked. You've sought. You've knocked. I've given you the answer there. Uh, how about accepting it now, dummy? <laughs> you know, that's what God's wanting to say to us. And oftentimes we deserve to have him say, hey, dummy, looky here, I got it for you. But we lack the faith. We've got the words. We invest the time to pray. But we ain't got the faith of heart to do anything with it. Our prayers seem to go unanswered. Maybe we do got the faith of heart. Rhoda at least went to the door. She may have gotten overexcited, but she at least went to the door. Oftentimes we, we, we have the faith. And we're praying for the healing for our loved one. We're, we're praying for the deliverance that's needed. We're, we're praying for the, the money for the to pay the bill that's already overdue. 
We're, we're praying for the job situation that's needed. We're praying for the restoration of the family. But maybe God still ain't answering. What now, preacher? We tend to forget that, again, he's omniscient. And he may have something better lined up. He may have a different path in store for us. Maybe there's a different direction the Lord is wanting to take us down. And this way that it looks like, God, I've got to have the money to take care of this bill right here. And God's saying, we're not going to worry about that bill. We're going to take care of something else instead. But from our perspective, God sure is taking his time on answering that prayer. And then you get when the powerful become more powerful. Notice with me in verse 20. And Herod was highly displeased with them of Tyre and Sidon. Uh, real quickly, uh, Tyre and Sidon, uh, a couple of provinces, provinces there. And Herod was responsible for taking care of them. And if he gets mad at you, which he got mad at them, uh, he cuts off the financial aid. He discourages people from going there and spending their money and all that. All of a sudden, uh, <laughs> we're hurting financially. Uh, we really need Herod to be nice to us again. So the Bible goes on to say, But they came with one accord to him, and having made Blastus the king's chamberlain, their friend desired peace. Hey, we want to get back on your good side, Herod. We're here to kiss up to you. Uh, because their country was nourished by the king's country. And upon a set day, Herod, arrayed in royal apparel, sat upon his throne and made an oration Unto them. This dude knew how to speak. He, he was very eloquent. Okay? Well, let's not beat around the bush. Guy was a great speaker. Okay? So, what do they do? Verse 22. And the people gave a shout saying, It is the voice of a God and not of a man. Well, here they are. They're trying to butter him up. They, they want him to be friendly toward them again. I, I get all that. You know, we, and we certainly here in America, we want the government to be on our side. It's our government after all. Well, we need to play nice with them so they will play nice with us. Okay, you know, let, let, let's not, you know, let's not say anything different there. Amen. They overplayed their hand here, though. Oh, it is not the voice of a man, it's the voice of a God. Herod sat back and says, Too right it is. I, I am pretty special. As a matter of fact, yeah. Yeah, I do believe I am a God here. And what happened? The <laughs> Bible says he got struck down. <laughs> he ended up dying a very horrible, painful death because of it. What had happened was that while he was this gifted orator, he allowed his pride and ego to keep building. He actually became what 1 John 2.18 talks about, and he became an antichrist. 1 John 2.18 talks about how there, there are many antichrists. Antichrists are anyone who is opposed to God, who is opposed to Jesus, the diametric opposite of him. Herod made himself that way, and it cost him dearly. And so while the government might be uh, becoming more powerful and more overreaching, while there are private industries out there that are saying, uh, no, uh, you're not doing what I like, therefore I'm going to shut you down. That is... I'll probably, I might get in trouble with Facebook on this one, but, you know, oh well, life goes on. Uh, I had a video this past week from a year ago came up on my timeline in the memories. And I, I re-shared it because I remembered that video, that, that sermon that I preached there, when the eagle is down. And I, and I remember how much I loved getting to use a couple of the, the little kids from the church there to demonstrate this concept of the eagle. And there was absolutely nothing wrong with this video. I didn't preach against anybody. I didn't step on anybody's toes. It was simply a video to encourage. 
And I shared it to my timeline. The next day, Facebook gave me a notice. Uh, this video is in violation of their standards and has been removed. It did nothing of the sort. It told me that I can protest it if I like, and I did. They came back and said, well, because of COVID, we ain't got enough people to go through and double check right now. So if we are able to, we will eventually get to it. End of subject. Oh, well. I still got the sermon itself up on sermonaudio.com. Y'all can go check it out for free over there if you want. Yeah, you don't get to see the visual uh, of the kids as the eagles, but, you know, you get to hear me at least talk about it. A little bit of overreach to powerful, becoming more powerful. And the Lord, why in the world couldn't we share this, this video? How much encouragement could it have possibly given to someone who didn't see the video a year ago that could see it now? I don't know. God knows. Maybe it was simply to give me an, ex an example here for this sermon today. Maybe it was to spur people on to, to going over their sermon audio and checking that out. Dennis Sampson, uh, when the eagle was down, oh, hey, I'll listen to that sermon out. I don't know. Mm -mm. But I do know this. That even though people we love die, persecution may be on the rise, prayers may seem to be going unanswered, and the powerful may be becoming more powerful. God is taking his time. It's because provision is being made. Verse 24. But the word of God grew and multiplied. Through all of this that has taken place here, James being executed, Peter being arrested, and going to be executed if possible, prayer seeming to go unanswered, Herod becoming even more powerful, God is still on the throne. All of this was spiritual miracle grow. For the church. <laughs> to help get the word out there. To see more people getting saved. James was the first to go. But he showed we are not to worship the apostles. He got to go to his reward. Peter needed reminding that he was to go and preach. Not sit and preach. He was still there in Jerusalem. Well, he went out a little bit and he turned around and came right back. The Bible said there in, John, in Acts chapter 1 verse number 8. Ye shall be witnesses unto me both in Jerusalem and Judea and Samaria and unto the uttermost parts of the earth. Peter had to get going out there so that he could write the two epistles that bear his name. So that he could have his fellowship with Paul, have the little incident that we have recorded for us there in the book of Galatians, and grow and see souls saved. Those who were praying, they needed a lesson session in how faith works. It ain't just us muttering a few words and, and, and adding amen at the end or in Jesus' name, amen, but it is us actually having faith in the prayers that we are asking of our Heavenly Father. Herod was about to be put in his place because God would not share his glory. And all those right now out there who think they can stomp out Christianity, those who think they can silence Christians, those who think they can stop the gospel, guess what, baby? Your day is coming. The Bible says very clearly, every knee will bow. Even Satan one day will bow the knee. <laughs> Provisions being made. As a matter of fact, you see verse number 25, we find the first missionary team was being set up. And Barnabas and Saul returned from Jerusalem when they had fulfilled their ministry and took with them John, whose surname was Mark. You know, they could have easily just went ahead and left that part out. That could have been the opening line to chapter 13, verse number 1. 
But I believe the Lord, even though chapter breaks are man-made, verses are man-made, I believe the Lord had it established this way to show us here that while all this was going on, while all the focus was over here, God was working over here to get something else established. Because in a few years, Paul is going to be leading the gospel's assault on Europe. How many of us as we sit here right now watching on Facebook, listening on sermonaudio.com, over at the YouTube channel, Digging in the Word Ministries, how many of us are for, of a European descent? I'm just, you know, throwing stuff out there right now, but uh, let's face facts. Paul's the one who God used to get the gospel going there in Europe. Others followed, yeah. But those first footsteps were from Paul and his group. Just saying, church. Yeah, I know. Some some people listening in, it'll be from Africa. Yeah. Had, miss had missionaries, apostles went there. Africa as well, other parts of Asia. I get it, I get it, I really do. And think about that one for a moment. Everything happening with James and Peter here, in this church here, in Jerusalem. Over here we get a quick side note of Barnabas and Paul taking John Mark and heading back to Antioch. And we're not even told about the rest of the apostles who've already begun to disseminate out. I think it was Thomas who went to India. Yeah, the, the rest of them suddenly uh, escaped my mind. But the fact of the matter is, we're, we're showing this little cliff note. What about all the others and how they were spreading out? Maybe they'd already gone out. Maybe they also needed a swift kick in the pants. I don't know. But I do know this. All of this happened while God was making provision. Everything that's taking place in our lives, God is making provision, church. He's setting something else up. Yes, this door closed in our face. Yes, every other door down this hallway seems to be closed. Keep praising him there in the hallway. Keep checking those doors. Okay, is this the one that's open? Is this the one that's open? Hey, I found the one that's open. We would have never found it if we didn't keep going forward looking for what God had next for us. If we continue to sit there at that one door that God has closed, beating on it. Come on, God, open this door, open this door, open this door. We're going to miss the provision that he established for us down the road. But he was only able to do it by closing that door. By not answering that prayer the way we wanted to. By that loved one passing away. By the persecution rising and the powerful trying to squish us underneath their thumb. All that God's using to answer. Because he is rightfully taking his time. Nothing's catching him by surprise, church. Ain't you glad about that? I know I am. But in closing here, I've just got one question and one statement for you. Number one, have we stopped to consider what God might be trying to do in this very moment? Think about it, church. And the statement is this. If God is taking his time, so should we. Our Father, we do thank you, Lord, once again for all that you've done for us and for giving us yet another opportunity to stand here and bring your word to your people. We do pray, Father, that everyone here in the sound of my voice got exactly what it is that they need out of the sermon today and that they will use it the way that you'd have for them to. Help us, Lord, please, to be obedient to you, to follow after your holy will. In the name of Jesus Christ, we do pray. Amen and amen. Go ahead and sing our usual closing song here today. <clears throat> Jesus' blood washed away all my sin. Will you accept this price and let him in? Into your heart, into your life. He will help and guide you through strife. 
He'll give you peace and everything. Oh, what joy this peace will bring. Accept the sacrifice from him, and you'll find great peace within. You accept the trials from God, the way that you accept the good. He sends the troubles down to you, for his grace will carry you through. He'll give you peace in everything. Oh, what joy this peace will bring. Accept the sacrifice from him, you'll find great peace within. He gives us trials and troubles to show he can handle the squabbles. When troubles and trials are o'er, you'll see all his blood will cover. He'll give you peace in everything. Oh, what joy this peace will bring. Accept the sacrifice from him, and you'll find great peace within. Hey man, hey man, I thank you for your attention. May the good Lord go with you throughout the course of your week. Don't forget, don't forget, don't forget. Garage Baptist is simply supplemental material. If you are able to go to church today, please go there. If you're not able to go, but they have an online service, please attend the online service. But only if you're not able to go. Uh, why is that, preacher? Because it is our presence that is the greatest present to God. And we are not to be forsaking the assembling of ourselves together, but we're supposed to be gathering together so we can encourage one another, we, we can comfort one another, we can get the help that we need from one another. Can't exactly do it at home. So if you're able to go, please do. Abba Father, we thank you, Lord, one more time for being so good to us, for loving us and saving us. And we thank you, Lord, that even though it sure seems like there, there's an issue going on here and you're just not answering. You are. It's just us that need to come correct. Help us, Lord, please, to be obedient to you and follow your holy will. In the precious name of Jesus, we do pray. Amen and amen.